Apple just announced a new iPhone 15 and the iPhone 15 Pro, but this year they're more different than ever. So in this video, I want to do a full comparison between the iPhone 15, iPhone 15 Plus, iPhone 15 Pro, and iPhone 15 Pro Max. I've separated the similarities and differences into just six different categories. We've got the design and how they look, the different displays that Apple is using on these phones, the all new camera systems, which are super different, the battery life across all models, the chip that powers everything, and the connectivity. Like USB-C is on all all the iPhone 15s, but one is like a real USB-C and the other one is just kind of here. So first let's start off with the design, which I think looks incredible this year. They actually fundamentally share the exact same design language no matter which iPhone 15 you buy, which is now way more comfortable in your hand as Apple has subtly rounded the edges. So while the DNA is the same as something like an iPhone 12, 13, or 14, in your hand it feels completely different and I promise you, somebody who has an iPhone 15 model in my hand, it is a huge difference when you're holding it. And on top of that, Apple's using frosted back glass on all of the iPhone 15 models for the first time. Well, they call one color infused on the standard 15 and the other like a proper frosted matte on the pros. From what we've seen, they look pretty much the same. But that's where the design similarities end, as Apple is using completely different materials between the 15 and the 15 Pros. The iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Plus are made out of aluminum, which is a pretty cheap and lightweight material that Apple has been opting for for years. It makes the colors look absolutely amazing, but it's not very durable. So to make the iPhone 15 Pro super strong, Apple's using a material they've never put on the iPhone before, it's titanium. It's incredibly lightweight for the properties that it has, which is being super strong, and it's significantly more durable than aluminum. So if you drop your iPhone 15 Pro, it's much less likely to crack than the aluminum iPhone 15. That being said, the colors that you're getting on titanium are pretty boring. You've got a blue color, but everything else is black, white, or natural titanium titanium, where all of the fun colors, an entirely new pastel collection, those are exclusive to the aluminum iPhone 15s. And the last big design difference is one of my favorites. On the pro iPhones, there's no longer a mute switch. It's been replaced by a new action button. The action button on iPhone 15 Pro, which is still set by default to silence your phone, can be remapped to nine different things, including a focus mode, opening the camera or the flashlight, recording a voice memo, using translate, a magnifier, any shortcut or accessibility features. Yeah, as somebody who keeps my phone on silent 100% of the time, I'm, I'm very excited for the action button on iPhone 15 Pro. Now we didn't get an iPhone 15 Ultra this year, but I wanna show you how to make your phone Ultra with Casetify who sponsored today's video. This is their new Ultra Bounce case and it's insane in all of the best ways. This is an entirely new offering from Casetify with six layer rugged protection. It's got an all new camera lens cover that will completely protect your cameras, a hard shell backplate and a hard shell bumper to protect your phone from damage all the way around it. New Ultra Bounce corners that have been redesigned from the ground up and looks super cool, and an X-shaped EcoShock lining on the back, plus EcoShock inner lining as well. Now, every phone manufacturer claims to have this magical technology, Casetify calls theirs EcoShock, to prevent your phone from cracking when you drop it. What actually is this? Let me show you, because what Casetify does, their proprietary tech, is very interesting. It's so interesting that Casetify sent me a special PR package to show you the difference between a competitor material and their proprietary EcoShock, with two metal balls to drop against both. And by the way, this is probably the most beautiful PR package I've ever received. Starting off with the competitor material, you can see that when the ball drops against this, it is super bouncy because this competitor material that fills up other phone cases absorbs absolutely no shock whatsoever. But now doing the same thing with EcoShock, you'll notice the difference in real time immediately. The ball absolutely stops in its place because this tree root inspired design that Casetify has opted for is really good. Even dropping the ball from way higher than the competitor material, you can see EcoShock stops it in its tracks because the shock absorption is so good. And speaking of drop protection, the new Ultra Bounce case has a lot. It 10 times the military standard and the ability to withstand drops of up to 32.8 feet. And if you're wondering what 32.8 feet looks like, that's all the way down there. Now, if you're looking for something a bit more tame, Casetify also has their updated bounce case that is 16% more slim than last year with 21.3 feet of drop protection at six times the military standard. Or for an even cleaner option, check out the impact case with 8.2 feet of drop protection at four times military standard. And Casetify offers so many different prints for all of their cases over on their website. There's seriously so many to choose from and they're also customizable. You can put your name or something else meaningful to you on the case directly and it prints with a super high quality vinyl. So Casetify is what I'm trusting to protect my iPhone 15 Pro this year. You guys can get 15% off your order when you go to casetify.com slash apple track right here on screen as well. A huge thank you to Casetify for sponsoring this video. They are 
They're my favorite. Don't tell them I said that. Okay, that's all for now. Let's get back to the video. Okay, next up, let's talk about the displays, which are more similar than ever, because for the first time, all iPhone 15s have Dynamic Island. This is one of my favorite features that Apple first dropped on last year's 14 Pro, and now you can get it on every iPhone 15 you can buy. You can see the status of your AirPods, or now playing music, or even third-party apps like Uber, and how close your car is to you on Dynamic Island. And seriously, I'm just so happy it's on all iPhone 15. And Dynamic Island, of course also means that you have face ID on all models as we've had across the board for a few years now. And actually the broader specs of the screen are one-to-one -one between iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Pro except for one thing that we'll get to in a second. All iPhone 15s are available in either 6.1 or 6.7 inch sizes with the exact same resolutions in pixel density with incredible 2 million to 1 contrast, P3 color, and now 2,000 nits of max brightness on all models. This means that the quality of the screen will look the exact same. It's not like you buy a Pro and the colors are better on the Pro screen than the non-Pro. Apple's OLED displays mean incredible black levels and just incredible tuning and colors. Except, if you buy an iPhone 15 Pro, you are getting at double the refresh rate. The iPhone 15 Pro has a 120 hertz ProMotion display that is absolutely worth the extra money alone just for me because the animations in iOS are buttery smooth, plus you get some bonuses like the always on display. The always on display is remaining exclusive to the Pros once again, just because the refresh rate can get all the way down to 10 hertz, which is enough to not actually kill your battery. Other screen differences aside from 120 hertz, well, there's only one, and that is the ridiculous ridiculously thin display borders on the iPhone 15 Pro, which Apple has shrinked by about 30% this year, and make the screens on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max ever so slightly bigger than the year before. I thought it would be impressive in renders, but seeing it actually in person, somebody holding the 15 Pro and looking at the edges, it looks ridiculous, especially on the Pro Max. Now, let's move on to the cameras. I mean, just looking at these, you can see that there's two lenses versus three. That is a trend that Apple is continuing this year, but there are more similarities and more differences on the 15s than I thought were ever possible in a really interesting way. Let's just start off with the selfie camera, which is one-to-one -one identical across both phones to the T, except the Pro phones can shoot 4K 60 ProRes video. Let me just tell you, unless you are a professional videographer, you do not need 4K ProRes on the front-facing selfie camera. All iPhone 15s now also share a 48 megapixel sensor, which means that they're doing like two-to-one pixel binning, so that you're getting 24 megapixel photos, which look absolutely ridiculous. All iPhone 15s can also shoot video at up to 4K at 60 frames per second, as well as the Smart HDR5 update. That's what combines a bunch of exposures to give you the best possible photo. That's available on all models. Of course, there are still a ton of differences between the cameras on these models. Starting off with a number of lenses, there's two lenses, wide and ultra-wide on the 15, and three lenses, wide, ultra-wide, and telephoto on the Pros. But the telephoto lens has definitely gained and lost some of its glory this year. Because for the first time ever, you can now get a telephoto 2x zoom on the standard iPhone 15 due to the new 48 megapixel sensor. Apple's essentially cropped the 2x sensor in to give you a really high quality 2x telephoto image without a 2x telephoto lens. It's camera magic, it's amazing, and I'm so happy that they brought this to the non-pros. But for more and better zoom ranging, then of course there's the iPhone 15 Pro, which on the regular Pro 6.1 inch model, you have 0.51 2, and 3x. And on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, you're keeping the first three but gaining a ridiculous 5x telephoto due to the completely new telephoto 5x camera system that Apple has introduced this year. It's the biggest camera upgrade we've seen to the iPhone probably since portrait mode on the iPhone 7 in 2016 because the images that you're able to capture at range and the expanded 25 times digital zoom, they're just really big upgrades and they take up so much space internally that Apple couldn't actually fit it into the 15 Pro, so that's why it's only available in the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And where the Pro phones really start to shine is in everything else that they can do. They're the only phones that can capture ultra-wide macro photography and videography, which allows you to get insanely cool shots where you can get the camera so close to something and it's still perfectly in focus. The macro mode that is exclusive to the Pros is genuinely something I use all the time, and I couldn't go back to a phone without it for myself. The iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max also have second-generation sensor shift optical 
image stabilization, which is a must have if you shoot a lot of video. And as somebody who does, I'm very much looking forward to that on the pros. The iPhone 15 pros can also shoot Apple Pro Raw, which is a super large file format that allows you to gain maximum resolution from your camera. It's literally the raw file Apple's just giving to you to edit and post, which is a, a must need if you're a photographer. That was just the photo stuff for the pros. Their dominance continues into video features as well. For the first time, you've got 4K 60 video for ProRes recording. It used to be 30 frames per second on previous iPhones. You've got log video recording for the first time ever, which will be a huge change for color workflows, as well as the Academy Color Encoding System, which is highly used in the industry when you're actually making movies. Like Apple, I thought they were kind of kidding about using the iPhones for serious cinema production. They are not. But the feature I'm most excited for is that the iPhone 15 Pro can capture 3D spatial video that you can watch on Apple's Vision Pro headset. Words cannot describe how strongly I feel about this being added. This is going to change the game. I know Vision Pro is $3,500 and it's confusing and why is Apple doing this thing and it's probably gonna flop, but I disagree with all that and that's a topic for another video. Just know that if you buy an iPhone 15 Pro, it uses the top two cameras to record videos that you can basically put on this headset and feel as if you are living the moment back in time. And everybody underestimates how strong nostalgia is until you shot a video of a relative or somebody that's no longer with you on your iPhone 15 Pro, you can put on the headset and feel as if you are back in time with that person. That feature did not get enough keynote time. That feature is gonna change the game. And that feature, again, for me, would be worth the pro loan to capture memories that I can relive later. Whew. Okay, that's all the camera stuff. I'm sorry, it was a lot. Apple does this to me every year. There's just so many camera details. So let's move on now to battery life. Let me go front and center here to say that reading these numbers to you doesn't exactly mean that much because whatever Apple promises on their website is never actually what you get in real world use. But you will see like which models tend to have the best battery life and which ones tend to have the worst. For the best battery life on an iPhone, you should get the iPhone 15 Pro Max, according to Apple, which has 25 hours of non-stop playback for streamed video. The 15 Plus is tied with the iPhone 15 Pro at 20 hours for streamed video. And just four hours behind that in third place is the iPhone 15 at 16 hours of streamed video playback. So just look at it as best battery life, 15 Pro Max, great battery, 15 Plus and 15 Pro, and good battery, but don't expect to be blown away, is just the standard 6.1 inch iPhone 15. And now moving on to the processors in these phones, this year more than ever, I think it's actually gonna have a pretty big impact on battery life. And while normally I would never advise somebody to buy a particular phone because of the chip inside, the A17 Pro, it does hit different this year. It's Apple's first ever chip based on a new three nanometer architecture, which simply means it is far superior to the actual design of the chip compared to the A16, which means way better efficiency, AKA better battery life just at a chip level, and it's also significantly more powerful. Specifically, if you are at all interested in mobile gaming on your iPhone 15, you should get a 15 Pro or a Pro Max with the A17 chip because the mobile ray tracing and on-device stuff here is just next level. I don't actually care about mobile gaming or ray tracing on my phone, so the A17 for that regard, I don't really care about, but for the battery life and the efficiency, that's what I care about. And I like that Apple has taken special care of that for the pros. And now moving on to the final category, this comparison connectivity. Apple's got a lot of similarities between all iPhone 15s, including the most fast 5G millimeter wave, as well as support for sub six gigahertz. Of course, these speeds can vary in different markets. Apple's emergency SOS via satellite, including the all new roadside assistance option for texting with satellite relay centers that is available on all iPhone 15 models. Bro, could you imagine for a second if Apple only put the satellite stuff on the pro phones and they were like, you gotta pay a thousand bucks to get help. You're not paying a thousand dollars. We are not flying a helicopter to your mountain. <laughs> <laughs> all of Apple's MagSafe accessories are compatible with all of these iPhone 15s as well. And I didn't know where to put the water slash dust resistance section, but they're IP68 across the board. All iPhone 15s are rated for up to six meters for 30 minutes. And yeah, all iPhone 15s have USB-C, but only the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max have the fast version of USB-C. On iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Plus, you've got the same charging speeds as all other devices, but
but the data transfer is locked at USB 2.0, which is the same speed that Lightning was locked at, which means that if you are in any way planning to transfer photos or videos off your phone on any regular basis, you, you do not want that phone. It will be miserable. It will be just like it's been on the iPhone for over a decade. USB-C on the iPhone 15 Pro works at USB 3 speeds, which is up to 10 gigabits of data transfer per second. It's 20 times faster than the USB-C on the standard iPhone 15. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm just saying that that's how USB-C on these phones are, which brings us to my final recommendation. If you made it this far in the video, like which one of these phones should you buy? $799 for iPhone 15 or starting at $1,000 for iPhone 15 Pro. My honest suggestion for the vast majority of you watching is to just buy the standard $799 iPhone 15. At that price, you're getting an incredible screen with Dynamic Island. USB-C is still present, so one cable for all of your devices. The biggest camera updates we've gotten on the standard models in years, fun colors with the new curved design, and still solid battery life. Again, all of that for $800 is an incredible value to me, considering that last year's iPhone 14 started at the same price and it had none of what I just said. It is the biggest upgrade for the standard models, I think, in history. However, for myself, I'm going to be getting the iPhone 15 Pro because I care about the best possible cameras, the best possible battery life, the best possible 120 hertz screen, the all new materials, and everything else like faster USB-C. If you care about that, get the Pros. If you want to save $200 plus, dollars, then absolutely, this is an insane value. I cannot stress that enough. Like, I just want your takeaway from this video to be the $800 iPhone 15 is a ridiculous offering in the smartphone market. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you're doing well. Let me know what you guys decided on down below in the comment section. A huge thank you again to Casetify for sponsoring this. I absolutely love them. They are the best and check them out, link below. I've been Sam, hope you're doing well. See you with more videos soon. I'll catch you in the next one.